woman is not as important as getting a mammogram in the postmenopausal woman. And that is curative. In this case, in this case, it's a matter of palliation and awaiting the further demise of the patient. So in, we should never be at a stage where we're actually diagnosing breast cancer at stage three or stage four. I think we've gone past it as a society that we should be able to present to a medical facility at any point in time when we see that there is a lump, there is a change in the breast. There's actually something that says to us that, look, this doesn't look normal. I do not have to wait for confirmation from my, from my aunt or my grandmother to tell me that I need to present to the doctor. You know breast cancer is the most common cancer woman. You know breast cancer is a cause of the, the primary cause of death within women, women between the age of 35 to 45. We know enough being said about breast cancer for us to not to have it presenting at stage three and four. The, the least we should be able to accept of breast cancer is presenting at stage one or stage two. We should be able to tell our doctor, yes, I do my, my monthly breast examination. Yes, I've noticed a change within the last month. It is sometimes a little bit annoying to find a patient, oh, I've never examined my breast. It's yours. It's yours to examine. It's almost an external organ that you can actually examine. And a lot of the cases you look at in terms of breast cancer, it is up to the patient to understand that they need to examine that portion of the body and not just present when there's a difference. You should be able to say, in all the 15 years I've been examining my breast, I never saw a change. I never saw anything. Now today I've seen something. Is this normal? Is this not normal? But to say, well, I never took the time to examine my breast is not acceptable because it's such an easy examination. It's, such, it's difficult to diagnose breast cancer before stage one. So, but it definitely it is easier to diagnose breast cancer when you have a one inch lump in your breast and that is stage two. So the difference between stage one and stage two is a life expectancy of in excess of 10 to 20 years. If you would like to add that 10 to 20 years to your life, I think you should continue to have a daily breast, a monthly breast exam in the premenopausal woman at a, at a, at a particular time of the month and in a postmenopausal woman, choose the time of the month that you would like to do your breast examination. In the younger woman, um, pre-puberty, there's always significant amount of breast changes. Breast cancer is extremely common. What is much more common is the asymmetry of the breast, the painful tenderness during the time of the periods. But breast cancer in a woman under the age of 15, extremely rare. We'll do a series of discussions on diet, exercise, and nutrition. But as a general overview um, of the patients that I've seen in my practice over the, the last 20 years in Richmond Hill, it's basically to observe the trend that continues and the trend that needs to be addressed. Even if it's addressed at an incremental level, meaning trying to ch make small changes, which is the way it should be done, or a rapid education. In the cases in which someone is not diagnosed with a disease process and you see the need for change, you can ask for that to be done incrementally. In the case that I've seen of a 14-year-old um, school kid being diagnosed with diabetes, that for me means that that should not be an incremental change. This needs to be a rapid change and a rapid re-education of that particular family and society at large. If we look at the customs that we've had and uh, with the businesses that we have on Liberty Avenue, we can safely say that any food business makes a good income. And we look at some of the quietic foods we eat and let's see how we can critique them a little bit. I'm not saying not to support my friends on the avenue. What I'm saying we should support them, but also be aware that what are the foods that are healthy for you and those that are not healthy. The whole reason for eating is for us to remain healthy, to have enough energy and enough nutrition. Food groups are divided into carbohydrates, which is the one that gives us energy. That is the rice, the roti, the vegetables, the pastas. The proteins obviously come from animal proteins, the meat we eat, eggs, cheese, the vegetable proteins that come from leafy vegetables as well. The fats obviously we see from the fats from legumes or basically maybe fats from animals, primarily animal fat. We also the minerals that we get from the foods, especially when we eat a balanced diet. So looking at some of the basic food groups, we can see 
that it meets the eggs, the legumes, the fish, gives us the protein that we want to eat. We can see that it comes from dairy product, yogurt, etc. So there's no role to say a vegetarian doesn't get, um, doesn't get protein in the diet because you definitely can get. And by vegetarian means someone who does eat meat or fish. Most of us classify ourselves by saying we're vegetarians when we don't eat any meat, but fish is also a meat. We look at the fruits we eat and mainly we look at the fruits. The primary purpose of the fruit, it provides us with vitamin C as Obviously, we know of all the major vitamins, vitamins A, B, C, D, E, um, vitamin K, etc. But we also know that basically it's important for us to get our vitamin C from fresh fruits. But we don't need to eat 10 fresh fruits per day. Because that will increase the amount of sugar water we're drinking. Because what is a fruit? A fruit is primarily made up of the, let's say, the vitamin C, a small portion of it. But then the rest of it is either carbohydrates a lot of water, a lot of fiber. But with what it does to us, especially of us who are prone to becoming diabetic or, or already are diabetics, what it does, we're exchanging a small amount of vitamin C for a large amount of sugars. One fruit per day, an apple is probably mess. Why is it better? It actually has the vitamin C. It's slow to digest. We don't want something that's easily digestible because that becomes sugar water very, very early. Because a fruit in itself is just a breakdown product. We'll eat glucose and fructose, which basically is sugar water. When we look at the vegetables, the, uh, the vegetables that can give us a lot of the minerals and also um, a lot of the fiber that we eat, it's definitely portions of vegetables um, we cannot get enough of. The carbohydrates, I think, where as a society we've actually failed ourselves. What we actually think is that the amount of carbohydrates we have in a scoop of rice is almost about a thousand calories. How much does it take you to burn a thousand calories? Let's say for instance we start to exercise and say I'm gonna exercise this evening. The time to start eating carbohydrates it's like four hours before. Why four hours before? It takes that amount of time for the food to be taken into the stomach from the esophagus into the stomach and then being digested into the small intestine. So the glucose that's now um, in the bloodstream and into the liver can now be broken down enough and in time and not stored as fat but is readily available for energy to exercise. But if you're going to be running or walking around the park at least for two to three miles, you do not need a bowl of rice to do that. The amount of rice that fits into your hand is enough energy to take you five laps around. If you're going to be a sprinter and you're running and you're doing excessive amount of exercise, maybe two bowls will be enough. In addition to that, you do not need a sweetened drink every time you go by when you feel tired. Because at times I find is that we replace the sugars immediately so there's no weight loss. If the purpose of exercise, and it primarily should be to keep healthy and to lose weight, you're not going to lose the weight if in fact your input of calories is in excess of what you're burning, you should be in a position where I'm going to be exercising to burn 1,500 calories, but I've taken in only 500 calories. The smart way of doing it is deciding when you're going to be exercising and stick to that. Four hours prior to exercise to make sure that you don't just take a sweetened drink before you start exercising. Have maybe a food that's made of complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates. The simple carbohydrates will present you, will prevent you with, will present you with enough calories to do the exercise. The complex carbohydrates will prevent you from eating because it takes a longer time, a transit time, to get out of the stomach so you feel full. One of the worst things to do is to pump yourself up with a drink before and then you feel full and you don't feel like you want to run any longer. You've also ingested the, the large amount of carbohydrates to give you the energy and you've not expended it. That will not become fat. So we wasted that. You've also wasted the simple fact that they, they not understanding that the digestion of the sugars, you need it for immediate energy. But the way to have it for immediate energy is not by drinking it just before you exercise because what it does, it raises, because the, incre increased amount of ins the increased amount of sugars raises the insulin level and then the insulin level drops the sugars dramatically and we start to feel tired and fatigued. So the way to do it is to systematically say to yourself, I'm going to be exercising in four hours. I will have a bowl of rice or a bowl of um, 
Uh, the food should consist of some rice or some carbohydrates and some complex carbohydrates. So we still feel full enough to continue exercising, prevent us from taking that sweetened drink, which is going to give us a burst of energy, but it will prevent us from doing a long, a long period of exercise because then we start to feel tired and fatigued. The concept of diet, exercising, and losing weight is not a very simplistic one. In fact, sometimes we tend to want to make it up. What I know is obviously simplistic is that we eat too, many, too much carbohydrates in our society. We eat too much roti, too much rice, too much flour products. Simple carbohydrates because these are stuff that's so easily absorbed and at the end of the day, what they do is because we do not expend the energy associated with it, it then becomes transformed, having been stored into the liver and not being utilized for gluconeogenesis and being broken down to provide energy now becomes fat. And you can know as a society, and this is not exaggerating, we produce, in, we have enough trunkal fat so that our incidence of diabetes and metabolic syndrome is increasing. I am now seeing younger and younger patients in my practice with obesity and the sequelae of obesity being the primary one is diabetes in our society. So if we have a very good education, which I intend to try and present you with, as much as education in terms of nutrition, dieting, and exercise, and doing it. There's certain things you do. You try and do it systematically, slowly, and keep to a regime.